Do you think drinking so much coffee has helped you um, <laughs> grow your business? Grow my beard. <laughs> and your beard? Yeah, if it wasn't for coffee, my beard wouldn't be as long as it is today. I think mine's growing too. I shaved this morning. Wow, it's amazing. So by tonight, I'll look like this? Yeah, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Come on. Gabby, hi. I'm a fishmonger from New England, and I recently moved to Portland, Oregon, which is a mecca of high-quality weirdos, artists, and most importantly, a bustling and thriving food scene. I invite you to come with me on my journey through my new state of Oregon to experience and taste every flavor that this place has to offer. I'm starting off my adventure with some of Portland's most innovative chefs and restaurateurs. These are the tastemakers that have put Portland on the map as one of the best places to dine and drink in the country. When it comes to coffee in Portland, nothing beats Stumptown. We're here at the original location on Southeast Division Street where the Empire was started. I'm here to meet with Dwayne Sorensen, the creator of Stumptown Coffee to find out how his business has blossomed and how his success is a way that he honors Portland's roots. I just got back yesterday from Ethiopia. Wow. You wanna try some of that coffee? Yes. Let's do it. Take a whiff of that. Delicious, nice, yes. A huge inspiration when I started Stumptown is to have a relationship with the coffee farmers all over the world, understand what their challenges are, so I could pay them wages so they could treat their coffee pickers in a way that it could be sustainable. You gotta get down, you gotta meet, you gotta hug, you gotta communicate. We just celebrated our 15 year anniversary. I started it November 1st of 1999. Did you no, party did. like it was 1999? I'm still partying like it's 1999. <laughs> Cheers to that. Amazing. Yeah, thanks. Fuck, that's good. Why did you name it Stumptown? Coming up with a name for the company was the hardest thing I've probably ever done. But Stumptown is the name of Portland, isn't Stumptown's it? Stumptown's the name of Portland, so it was easy. <laughs> That's why I named it Stumptown. I'm actually getting hot from this coffee. I gotta take off a layer. Woo! I'm sorry, I feel like this coffee is starting to really- It's starting to work. Yeah. Um, did you know that you were doing a new thing with coffee, or were you just doing your own thing? I was just doing my own thing. You know, people said I was fucking crazy. Or like, Portland doesn't need more coffee. They don't need another coffee roaster. Naysayers. But I did it. You did it. Well, I'm still doing it. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud. You can say it of yourself. I'm proud. I'm proud of you. Oh. <laughs> you should try cold brew. Being a lover of Guinness beer and being a lover of iced coffee and cold brew coffee, I reached out to a lot of brewer friends of mine. I was like, hey, is it possible to put coffee on nitro? They were like, yeah, let's give it a shot. So fingers were crossed and look what happened. It just... That looks exactly like Guinness. The flavor of the mouthfeel is so clean, so smooth. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. You know what I do sometimes? Put ice cream in it. Oh my gosh. Yes, oh my gosh. I love you. I love the east side of Portland. Well, I love all of Portland, but you know, I started Stumptown on the east side, Southeast Division, and every street that you go over, major street, it's like its own little village and community. I wanted to give back to the neighborhood that helped me build Stumptown. So I've opened up some restaurants. Right here I, on Division? Right here on Division, right next door. Oh, this place is your place? What was, yeah, that's my place. You wanna go see it? Yes. Let's go see it. Okay. All right. All right. Let's eat seafood. Welcome to the Woodsman Tavern. Thank you. Yeah, all your dreams are going to come true here. So I waited for you to sit down. You was that a gentleman? gentleman? Was that nice? Yeah, it was yeah, nice. Duh. Woodsman, Stumptown, both lumber references. I didn't even think about that until you mentioned it. Who is the Woodsman? I'm the Woodsman. I was setting you up for that one. Yeah, I hit it out of the park, didn't I? Yeah, you did good. How many employees do you have now? A million. Really? No, um, no. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> Holy mackerel! Holy moly! This has mussels, Oregon shrimp, dungy crabbies. Oysters. You have to literally stand up like a beast to eat something like this. 
Mmm. Mmm. I feel like King Kong. It's just me, though. <laughs> Try the mussels. Okay. They're smoked. Oh, that's good. All right, that was nice. Mmm. Mmm. There you go. This is an awesome seafood thing. I'm definitely coming back. Do you hang out here a lot? All the time. Really? Uh-huh. So people can come in here and get your autograph? Yeah, totally. Really, this has been awesome, With Dwayne. My pleasure. <laughs>Trucks have existed throughout our country for many years in the form of hot dog stands, taco trucks, shawarma, stuff like that. But here in Portland, things are different. Vendors continually push the boundaries when it comes to creativity and ingenuity in their foods. I'm from the East Coast. I've never seen anything like it. One kamangai. Yes. Non That's it, done deal. So it's just chicken and rice. Yes. It's uh, common where I came from. You do a one dish, but you do it like serious and it's like secret of like generation. <laughs> the food is common, but this is my version. Do you eat it often? I eat it for five years already. Thank you. So I'm just gonna go for it. Oh my God, this is so good. That is comfort food at its best. It's ginger, garlic, the chicken is like cooked to perfection, it's super tender. In Portland, you can't have any prejudgments about the place that your food is coming from because this comes from a street cart. It's like better than what you could get in a sit down restaurant. I mean, it's just perfect. You were my hero. I would love it if you guys would make me a custom crepe. Oh yeah, of course. All right. Well, I just ate a ton of chicken, so um, something sweet would be good. You're on the sweet side. Yeah, yeah, on the sweet side. Let me do that. See, when I moved here, it wasn't a thing. It was just there were food carts and they were for downtown. It's gotten to a point now where you do something really, really good, you just don't get any attention. So people are stepping up their game? Yeah, absolutely. Using good purveyors, using good produce, and then doing one thing really, really well, like Nong. Mm, delicious. There, there you go. So this is a special crepe that he made for me. Nutella, chocolate, strawberry, a little bit of rum, and um, of course, the most important ingredient, which is the crepe itself. What stands out the most to me is the texture of the crepe. It's chewy but crispy, and it's not too light. Mm. Crepes in general remind me of home because my mom used to make us crepes for breakfast when I was little. Come here, give me a hug, you craver. Aww. It's amazing how the food cart scene here has elevated street food to a new level of legitimacy. In much the same way, Chef Gabriel Rucker, the owner of Le Pigeon Restaurant, shakes things up by creating classic dishes with unexpected ingredients like offal or pigeon legs. When the James Beer Foundation named him the best young chef in the U.S., food fanatics started flocking to Portland. Tonight, I get to join him for a home-cooked meal with his family and friends in Southeast Portland. We're here at the largest Asian market in the state of Oregon. Gabriel is going to select from a wide variety of ingredients to make tonight's menu. This is where I start my morning a lot of times in the week, so I thought we would just kind of cruise and come up with something fun to make. Okay. Le Pigeon started out with lots of like offal. These aren't the expensive luxury cuts. It's like the real people's food in here. Can we get five squid? The ones in the back? Too pink. I'm really picky. You're, yeah, I was gonna say. You're... <laughs> because I'm a fishmonger. No, nope, down. Yes, yeah, yes. And the one next to it, that's fine. Thanks, man. Does that look good? I shouldn't say this, but like when I'm just kind of cooking at home, I'm not like the crazy picky person. Thank you. Who knows if we'll use all this stuff, but we'll sure give it the old college try. Okay. What is this? I don't know. Could That's the fun, you know? <laughs> yeah. I like your style. Chili shrimp sauce. Look at all those little shrimps. That's a good sign. I think it is. Oh, this is one of my favorite aisles. It's got like all of the like, just nasty shit. Like, <laughs> look at this. 
the, like some pony. Right? Yeah. Okay. We got a lot, and if we didn't get it, then we didn't. Yeah. And if it works, then we look like geniuses, and if it doesn't, then everyone will know that I've been exposed as a total fake. I'm gonna have you, since you're a fishmonger, clean those squid at oh, my no house problem. too, yeah. okay? Yeah. Sweet. Hello, Good. this is Gabby. How are you doing? Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is Hannah, you. my wife, Babette, my daughter, Elise, and Ansel. Oh, and that's Gus. Are you shy? <laughs> this is where the Hi magic there. happens in the house. While you're cleaning the squid, what I'm gonna do is make that sausage that we're gonna stuff inside the squid so then our projects can come together. And then we'll deep fry that shit. Amazing. There's a lot of stuff in these squids. Like, I bet you could do something with that. No thanks, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Watch out, little baby. Look at this, I'm gonna put you in there. Raised baby. Yeah. Gabriel, when did you open Le Pigeon? 2006. When we first started, Portland itself, you know, was a little bit more rough edgy as far as the cuisine is concerned. The food it was definitely less refined. And then opening up a sister restaurant, opening up Little Bird, um, which is a little bit more rough around the edges, bistro style place, has opened the door for Le Pigeon to then refine itself. And we now offer the tasting menu, which my daughter is having right now. It's consists of just a lime and that's $75. <laughs> um, but we still offer a la carte. So you can have someone ordering a seven course tasting menu with reserved wine pairings, seen at the bar next to two dudes that are stoned out of their mind having burgers. That's what makes the restaurant great, is that it, everyone feels wel welcome there. We've got our ground pork, and we're gonna stuff them in there and we're gonna braise them in those two nasty sauces with white wine and garlic and stuff. Yeah, do it, there you go. One of the nice things about this city is that we all really like each other. I like places opening up near me. I don't, I'm not in competition with them. Right. I feel like we're peers, and that's really a nice blessing to have. Totally. Oh, shit. What the hell? This stuff is the new nastiest thing I've ever worked with. Let me check my fridge to make sure there's nothing missing. Oh, what's this? Yeah? It's a mango. Mmm. We're about to get real nasty with the fryer. Doesn't look bad, does it? I think that this is probably gonna be the most impressive thing I've eaten since I've gotten here. All right. Is it ready? Yep. It's pretty good, man. I guess I'll eat it. So what do we have on the menu? Gabby's clean squid stuffed <laughs> with um, citrus pork sausage, Dijon coconut cream sauce, and our Asian fiend herbs. Not very fried rice, cooked it in pig's feet with pork chops, baby cuttlefish, oyster mushrooms, and pineapple. What'd you call it? Horse grass. Horse grass, <laughs> long beans <laughs> with uh, shrimp paste and cabbage with craft low fat sesame dressing. Are you hungry? Do you want some squid? Yes! Yeah, <laughs> 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 like Give it to her. I need a knife. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Hey, cheers. Cheers. Oh, for your health. Yum. For your health. You like the squid too? No. It's okay. I mean, this is just so flavorful. Every single thing is different, but jives. The like fried rice is so good. Yeah. Wow. It's so good. Half fried rice is kind of my specialty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. Do I do it? I just want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm so grateful to be invited into your home. And this was truly a behind the scenes look at your cuisine. And I could not be more grateful. Thank so, you. I had yeah. a blast. It was fun uh, awesome. hanging out with you guys and making stuff that we've never made before and getting to eat it. I'm a little bit starstruck right now. Gabriel Rucker and his family are some of the least pretentious people I've ever met. And that meal was so classy and that's what it's all about here in Portland. I just eat like a fucking pig all day long. I get to see hot chicks take off their clothes. Only in Portland are you gonna find a vegan strip club. The vegan diet definitely cultivates a nice booty. Best nacho I've ever had. Mm bone marrow and smoked cherry ice cream. Dare I say this is the best ice cream I've ever had. Here we go. After you ride a child's bike 
down an enormous hill. This is exactly the type of food you want to eat.